Hey everybody, it's Charlie Craven, and uh, I've got a new little treat for all of us today, as you might be able to see here. I've gotten a new camera, and uh, I'm sort of figuring it out as we go, but I think it's even a little bit clearer than the old version, which is sort of how those things are supposed to work, um, but I'm pretty excited about it. I think this is going to come out uh, pretty nicely and clear things up even, even a bit more. Uh, so what I'm going to tie for you for the inaugural uh, first fly on this new camera um, is the Guides Choice Hairs Ear. Um, and this is, uh, Chad Olson came up with this fly, and uh, um, this is sort of a full dress, you know, fancified hairs ear. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, it's got all the pieces. Um, it's got a flashback, it's got a peacock thorax, it's got a soft tackle, it's got... Uh, um, you know, hit some hairs mass dubbing on there, um, a few different little pieces and parts, um, but it's kind of got all the bells and whistles that you can add to a fly like this, so uh, I'm going to show you how to tie it. Now, uh, one of the things that I do differently is um, uh, the traditional version, the standard version, has got a partridge collar, and if you've used partridge feathers, um, you know that it's just hard to get the right size feather, even if you've got a whole hide, um, it's hard to get the right size feather. Um, to make the collar out of. So I'm going to show you the method that I use on my problem child uh, to build a custom sized collar from bigger feathers and I'm going to use some CDL hen when I do this. Um, now this fly that's in the vise here has got a partridge tail um, and I'm looking around on my desk right now. I don't know that I have a partridge feather right handy. It's here somewhere. Um, I got all excited about the camera so I, I didn't get all that prepared. But um, So I, I'm going to use the CDL uh, uh, Cocktailion hen feathers uh, to build the tail and the collar on this fly. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to take a TMCO 5262. Um, this is a size 14, and I try to get it covered with fur if I can. Um, so that's a 5262, and that's a 764th gold tungsten bead. Um, now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some 015 lead wire and make about a half a dozen turns. And obviously you can make this as heavy as you like, but I'm just going to uh, use this to, to help center the bead. So I made about a half dozen turns. I'm going to shove that up in the back of the bead. And then I'll come in with some Vivas 14 knot thread. Um, and in this case it's red. And I'll start that just behind the, the lead wire. And I'll build a little thread dam that works from the, the bare hook up to the diameter of that lead. And, that's just going to anchor things in place. And I do try to smooth that off. I'm not necessarily trying to cover it, although it very often gets covered in the process. Um, but I just want to smooth that off, and then I'll bring the thread all the way back to the bend of the hook. And at this point, I'm going to take a CDL feather, um, and this one is, is dyed brown, uh, but the natural actually would probably be a little closer to partridge. Um, and I'm going to pull off a clump so that the tips are, are square, and I want this clump, you know, I'd say this is going to be one and a half hook gaps, a little heavier clump. And I'll peel those off the feather. And I'm going to tie that in um, maybe just a touch longer than a, than a half shank. Get that position just right in my hand. <clears throat> and then I'll wrap forward over those butt ends to just up back behind the lead there. And I'll trim those butt ends out. Now the rib, I'm just going to use a piece of pearl crystal flash. So I'm going to tie that in up here where my thread was hanging, and I'll wrap back over it all the way back to the bend, like so. Now for the abdomen, I'm going to use, this is uh, Nature Spirit, uh, there we go, here's mass dubbing, in ginger. Um, and this, uh, I've been using a lot of this, and uh, um, I like this dubbing. It's rabbit fur, hair's mask, and a little bit of antron. Um, and I like this... Uh, the texture of this dubbing. It's its very buggy. Um, it's got some nice guard hairs in it, but it still still applies to the thread very nicely. Um, so I'm going to build a just a thin noodle. Onto my thread. And I'm going to use my bare thread here to work back so that my first turn of dubbing is back here at the bend and then I'll work forward from there. And you can see I can kind of take a few turns forward 
one back, just kind of building my taper as I go. And I can see I'm going to need just a touch more dubbing. Um, I like to run this dubbing a little bit further forward uh, into the thorax area just so that I get a nice clean overlap. We're going to use Peacock Curl for the thorax, um, which doesn't build volume in the same manner anyway as, as dubbing does. Um, so it's going to have a slightly different effect. So I want to sort of build up the, the volume on the hook with the dubbing. Tighten that last little end down. I do want to leave a little space there behind the bead. You can see how shaggy that dubbing comes out. Boy, that camera is clear. I like that. I'm happy. All right, so now I'm going to pick up my, my pearl tinsel, my pearl crystal flash, and I'm just going to evenly space turns forward through the body here. And then I'll tie that off at the front with a couple turns and clip the excess. Now in the interest of just kind of keeping this clean on the screen, I'm going to trim some of those guard hairs and that longer antron fibers out so that I've got a distinctly tapered abdomen there. All right, now for the flashback, I'm going to use, um, I like Mirage tinsel. You can use plain pearl, but I like Mirage. It's just a little bit brighter. Um, and I'm going to take a piece of large Mirage tinsel. And I'm going to first overlap my thread back to about the 60-40 point here. And I'll lay this piece of flash in, and I kind of stand it up on its edge. And as I wrap over it, my thread will center it on top, get a few turns on it. And then I want to make sure that it's square right across the top of the fly. Like so. And then I'm going to grab a peacock eye. And you can use strung peacock here as well. Uh, but I've got a peacock eye handy here. So I'm going to take uh, three or four nice bushy peacock curls and bundle them up and I'll cut the tips off so they're square. Um, I always tie peacock curl in by the tip ends. So I'm going to tie that in and anchor that down good and tight there. I bring my thread up to just behind the bead. Then I'll start to wrap this peacock curl, just slightly overlapping turns, right up to the back of the bead and tie it off. And you can see it didn't take many turns there, and most of our volume was built by the dubbing underneath it. You know, a couple turns to anchor that down, and then I'm going to lift my flash and bring it over the top and anchor it down with a couple turns. Now one thing I always do on flashbacks is I'll fold that flash back one more time and catch it again, just to anchor that in place. That way that's not going to come out at any point. And then I can come in and really the trick to this is just nick the corner of this with your scissors and it'll tear right across the radius of that thread so you don't have a stub that sticks out. Boy, this camera's so good, I see all the little stuff that's out of place. I'm going to catch so many more fish now. There we go. Oh, that looks so good. I hope you guys are excited about this as I am. All right, so now we're get to the collar part. Um, and conventionally, what you do is you just tie in a partridge feather and make a turn, um, a turn or two. Um, but it's, like I say, so hard to get uh, the exact right size partridge feather. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my dubbing whorl. I've got to clean them up here a little bit. I've got several random strands of thread still attached to them. But I'm going to take a Dynaking dubbing whorl, and I'm going to build a dubbing loop here. Um, and it only needs to be a couple inches long. So I'll anchor that down. So I've just got a loop of thread. And I'm going to take one leg of that and clip it in my material spring. And I know you can't see it, but what that does is that's going to hold that loop open while I mess with the material here <clears throat> that we're about to put in the loop. Now, for the collar, um, rather than use the same dubbing that I used <clears throat> excuse me, for the abdomen, I'm going to use a little bit of olive brown colored uh, Hair's mask dubbing. Uh, say, again, same stuff from Nature Spirit. Um, and just a tiny little bit. Really, this is just a vehicle uh, to help me pick this material up off the table and get it into that loop. And I'll show you what I do here. Um, and, you know, for a more in-depth view of it, um, if you watch the Problem Child video, um, it's, it's got a little bit more uh, 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 details on how to go about this. So now what I've got here is a CDL hen feather, and I'm going to pull off a clump like we did for the tail. Um, maybe maybe twice as big. Maybe get just a bit more there. And I want to pull those tips so that they become you know, pretty darn even. I can get a hold of them. If 
about like so. I'll get my finger up there so you can see that a little better. And I'm going to take that clump and lay it right down on top of that little pinch of dubbing. And I'll pick this up with my tweezers here to show you. So what I've now got is the dubbing and the hackle fibers just stacked one on top of the other. Um, and I do want this a little more square in my in my tweezers. And the idea being is I'm going to put the loop on the short side here. Uh, so what I want to do is kind of measure uh, where exactly that lines up to get my hackle length. And you can see the dubbing is really just sort of Velcro to, to kind of hold that all together. Um, it does kind of fill in the collar a little bit as well. So then I'll take and trim off the butt ends so that I've got just short fibers. You can see when I measure that, uh, kind of where my thread's going to line up, those tips will come back just about to the bend of the hook. And I can pick up my dubbing loop and put that fur between the two strands, the fur and the hackle fibers. Now I'm going to pinch below the fibers and I'll spin my loop and that will start to build us a sort of man-made hackle where we've got all those fibers sticking out and you can see that dubbing is just sort of the core. Um, so now I'm going to just use the dubbing whorl as my hackle pliers and I'm going to wrap this and as I go it's just going to take a couple turns I'm going to just sort of fold that back like I would a wet fly style collar. Then I'll tie off that bare stem just up here behind the bead. I come in and nick that thread out. You can see we've got a nice 360 degree collar on there um, that is appropriately sized. Um, so that's sort of a, a big win. You know, that's uh, uh, a technique that I, I have become a big fan of, uh, just to be able to use a bigger feather, which there's no shortage of in the world, um, but on these smaller flies. Um, so now, as a final step to sort of clean this up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull everything back, kind of hold all that hackle back, and I'm not going to wrap over it. I'm just going to build a collar here. I want a prominent uh, thread collar there behind the bead, like so. And then I'll come in and whip finish just up behind the bead. And here, before I get too far along, I'll show you a little trick for, for submitting this. I'm going to take some Bone Dry Plus here, and I'm going to squeeze out a little bead onto my thread. You can kind of smear it over an inch or so of thread, just so you've got those little beads on there. And what I'll do here is I'm going to wrap this around the thread head. So I'm using the thread to apply that, that resin so that it doesn't bleed into the collar. You can see that shined up the collar. And then I'll take my lamp and cook that. Just give the fly a little spin. And we've got a nice clean collar there that didn't bleed into the the resin didn't bleed into the into the hackle or the dubbing, uh, so a pretty clean way to do that. Um, and that is our guide's choice hairs here. Um, pretty slick, pretty slick. Um, I like the way that came out. I'm going to tie some more of those, maybe and vary those those uh, collar colors up a bit as well. Um, but you can see how this could be a small golden stone, could be a larger mayfly nymph, could be a caddis. Um, pretty generic pattern. Good dry dropper fly. Uh, just kind of general searching pattern, nothing too specific, um, but kind of a fun fly to tie as well. Um, I think, you know, we've been uh, sort of talking this about this a lot at the shop lately, and I think a lot of these uh, uh, sort of, um, I wouldn't even say this is an old school pattern, but variation on an old school pattern. Um, you know, everybody's kind of hung up on pertigons and skinny little uh, uh, new modern nymphs. Um, and a lot of these techniques are sort of going away on these on these older flies. Um, and honestly, in my opinion, you know, to be a good tire, you've got to do all of it. And uh, uh, don't be afraid of it. There's, uh, there's no, uh, no reason not to put as many of those, those tools in your toolbox as you can. Um, and that, there's no arguing. That's a pretty good looking fly. So um, I'm pretty impressed with this new camera. I hope you guys are too. I, I can't imagine you won't be. Um, I'll keep playing with it. It may, may get even better. We'll see. You know, I just don't know how my luck goes. Um, but there's my first fly of the morning on the brand new camera, and uh, 
I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Charlie Craven. Hit like and subscribe. Um, and, uh, I don't know, send smoke signals to your friends. Tell them to like and subscribe as well. And uh, we'll keep these videos coming. Thanks for watching.